Okay, well, so we're back. Over the past two decades, my next guest has made music history by creating the Sex Pistols. He's also produced albums by Adam and the Ants and Bow Wow Wow. His latest CD is entitled Paris. It's right here. Get a look at it. Please welcome Malcolm McLaren, everybody. We have to start. We'll, we'll get to the album in, in just a bit, but I have to ask you about the Sex Pistols. Maybe you're tired of talking about it, but we're probably talking about the most influential band probably the last 20 years, easily. You think so? I think so. Yes, I have a column in Rolling Stone. You should check it out. I'm very influential in these matters. Now, uh, oh my God. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, this, uh, I, I'm intrigued because I understand that you actually, it all came together, the band, the Sex Pistols, all came together at a clothing store. Is that right? Well, I had a kind of... Uh... I suppose what you call a dark hole in the middle of the street on Chelsea. And um, I used to sell rock and roll records and I used to sell clothes. Mm -hmm. And I used to have to stop a hell of a lot of thievery. Uh -huh. And in uh -huh. particular, there were two guys who drove me bloody mad. By stealing stuff constantly? I was just forever running down the bloody street. I was never in the store. and. I, in the end, decided one day when they came into the store to immediately start talking to them and watch them. Mm -hmm. And they got talking to me, and they weren't starting to thieve this time. They just told me about the fact that they had a rock and roll band. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe them, really. But out of curiosity, I took a peek down their so-called den and studio. And when I arrived, it was like an Aladdin's cave. Mm -hmm. This equipment could, must have cost a minimum of $200,000 or more. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't play any of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I started to think, is this their equipment? Or is this equipment that has come from somewhere else? <laughs> and then I suddenly realized it had come from David Bowie's stage. It had come from Brian Ferry's back van in his <laughs> studio. Uh -huh. It had come from raiding Keith Richards' house. <laughs> <laughs> Keith isn't very attentive about that stuff. No. He doesn't miss it. Uh -huh. But alongside the equipment, there were TVs and fur coats. <laughs> and then I realized the fur coat belonged to Anita Pallenberg, which <laughs> was Keith's girlfriend uh -huh. at the time. And then I discovered it was Keith's actual TV set as well. Uh -huh. So, I actually thought they must be very good at something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and at that point, it was, I decided to help them. It was a kind of uh, a moment of madness, mm -hmm. divine madness. You have occasionally, I'm sure you do. Oh, I have that a lot, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm on when a you get those now. moments, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you go for it, as they say. Now, these two were... Well, they were two thieves. Their, their names are probably renowned today. Mm -hmm. Well, Johnny uh, Rotten, one of them? No, no, no. He was a good boy. Oh. Uh, Who? Uh, <laughs> Steve Jones. Steve Jones, okay. And Paul Cook. All right. Now, how did uh, Johnny Rotten and Sid Vicious come into the whole thing? Uh, well, they were guys that I seemed to choose, in a way, when I stood in the store. Mm-hmm desperately looking for two other people to help these two guys that couldn't play <laughs> um, <laughs> manifest a group. Uh -huh. You needed um, someone who could play. Well, one stroppy kid came in the store desperate to buy a pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. And I just had a sort of hunch. I looked at him and I sort of um, asked him if he could sing. Looked at me as if I was totally mad mm -hmm. and said, uh, no. And I thought, well, can you play something, maybe? And he said, I can play the violin, but out of tune. <laughs> I thought he was a total <laughs> perfect. <laughs> I thought, I can't hire this guy. Uh -huh. So it wasn't long after that that we <laughs> discovered that he had the worst teeth I'd ever seen. <laughs> what kind of qualifications but are you? Almost. <laughs> well, You're a good thief. You have bad teeth. You're an <laughs> This is terrific. <laughs> Let's come together and make music history. It was kind of like that, to be honest. Uh-huh. And uh, we needed a bass player. Uh-huh. And a guy came in the store, really stroppy, 
He said he played the saxophone and he heard I had a group and he wanted to join it. Um, I didn't believe he could play the saxophone. He just uh -huh. didn't look like the kind of guy. His lips were too small. <laughs> and um, uh -huh. I didn't care. He kind of had a charisma about him. He had a charisma. He was, he was stroppy. Yeah. He was very stroppy and he, he used to jump up and down and act like some agent provocateur. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he was known to create this dance called the pogo, which over this shore, uh, or side of the ocean, I should say, became known as slam dancing. This guy, um, I call Sid, Sid, Sid Vicious. Sid Vicious, is, you gave them their names, is that right? Well, Johnny Lydon's name came about because of his bloody teeth, man. They were right. so <laughs> dreadful. Steve Jones looked at him, even though he was an absolute arch thief, uh -huh. and thought that he's got the worst rotten teeth I've ever seen, and that uh -huh. name just stuck, Johnny Rotten. Johnny Rotten, yeah. With, with the That'll green teeth. That'll sell tickets. Uh -huh. and, did, these um, guys, did these guys at least, at the very least, did they get along well? I mean, did they, were they at least friends? No, they hated each other. <laughs> I really did. Really? But one brilliant thing, I have to say, the most brilliant thing is they hated everything else. Mm -hmm. And with that, I had a united force. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was together, man. And they're, they're, you knew I agreed with them. That, all right. They couldn't. Well, you know, we're, we're out of time. I want to make sure we get to this. Uh, this is your, your latest uh, effort, Paris. You sing on this album, is this right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't sound at all sure. Well... I play the soppy, droopy, dreamy kind of guy, you know. Okay. I'm adding to the pile of nonsense that exists in this world. Uh, this happens to be... <laughs> You're a real salesman. You're a real salesman, I gotta say. Yeah, I sort of sing on it. I add to the nonsense in the world. You should check it out. <laughs> that is some beautiful women. Yo, Catherine uh, Deneuve sings here, right? Catherine Deneuve. You have to say it like that. <laughs> Gotta eat more boeuf bourguignon. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> you and I after the show. We'll check out Duran Duran together. That's a band that's going places. Uh, and so, uh, and, th and this is, is this your first time singing? Let's all first come together in love. Singing? Is this your first time singing on an album? I know you produce. Yes, but... of course it's my first time singing. <laughs> that's right. Well, it was a stupid question. Absolutely. I admit. How are my teeth, by the way? You've been in high school too long. Yes, I know. <laughs> Thank you. I just got out, too. All right, well, listen, the CD is uh, Paris. It comes out today. It's... Paris is in France, by the way. <laughs> just thought I'd let you know, because there's another language going on in there. <laughs> it's that Paris we should check out with our viewers. All right, Malcolm McLaren, everybody. Thanks very much for being here. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. That's, um... Folks, we'll be right back. Stick around. We'll see you in a second.